Here we go. I still can't figure out how I ever convinced WPG Radio and Harry Hurley and Michelle Dalmoni to let me on the air using this inner sanctum, this microphone. I am honored. My name is Mel Taylor, and this is WPG Talk Radio 1450. We are here every Friday afternoon from 3 to 6, and it's a blast to be here. And if you have any questions for uh, Josh Randall, he's the COO, the Chief Operating Officer of the Miss America Organization. You can call us at 609-407-1450. That's 609-407-1450. And I just wanted to say that I had I never went to Miss America, loved it. Never went to Miss America, loved it. Went to Madonna last week, spectacular. And here we are talking about all that with Mayor Mike Bagnell and Josh Randall. He's the chief operating officer of the Miss America organization. And he knew that Mayor Mike Bagnell was having a birthday today. And I'm pretty sure that you didn't get that strawberry shortcake for him, but you got him something else. Mr. Mayor, we've got you a, a great little present here. It's our 95th anniversary collector's edition of the Miss America Competition Magazine, signed by the one and only, this is one of the first off the press, because she's in town this week. She visited Atlantic City School uh, High School and, and uh, Richmond Avenue High School, our elementary school yesterday, signed by our new Miss America, Betty Cantrell. Wow. So happy that birthday, Mr. Fantastic. Man. Thank you so much, Josh. Thank you very much. I'm jealous. This is actually a beautiful magazine. I appreciate it. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Happy birthday. But you Thank were, you. You were born and raised in Ventnor, so you know how important Atlantic City and the uh, Miss America organization is. Miss America was born in Atlantic City. Yeah, they had a few years separation there, but it belongs back in Atlantic City. But indeed, um, I think I was talking to Josh earlier today, and I said, listen, I was blown away by the production. I, we were, you got me some great seats. Mindy and I were right there on the side, and you got to see Vanessa Williams you know, off stage, getting ready to come out. It was it was so moving. I, mean, I just get chill bumps thinking about it. And you know, her mother had meant so much to Miss Helen as well. And it was time. She has a it beautiful voice. Time. She does. And she's uh, she's gone on to a very illustrious career. We're we're so proud of Vanessa, and and we're so pleased to be able to welcome her. So home. let's recap. First off, how did you become a part of the Miss America organization? Well, if you can't tell by my accent, I'm a little bit uh, further south in South Jersey. I, I grew up in Mississippi, where I was uh, born and raised. Went to the University of Mississippi. Uh, I'm a big Giants fan because of Eli Manning. You might have heard of him. And uh, I, I worked for the British royal family in Washington, D.C. for a number of years. Uh, it was the Queen's Husbands Foundation. It's a charity that for young people all across the world called the Duke of Edinburgh's Award. And it was through that experience five years ago we started a partnership, a national partnership, with the Miss America organization. Because as you may know, uh, Miss America is the nation's largest scholarship provider for young women. We award millions of dollars in cash awards and in-kind scholarships so that women can go forward and finish a college education, get a PhD, be an attorney, whatever they want to do. And it really inspired me. And the more I got to know the program and the leadership and all the great things they were doing, I thought, you know, this is something that I really enjoy. So three years ago, I was asked to join the foundation board, and we did some really neat fundraising initiatives. And I got, I got the bug, as they say. And uh, the opportunity presented itself back in March. I will say this, you know, the, the CRDA back in 2013 did a study, and uh, it was an economic impact study, completely independently done. And uh, they found that the Miss America organization, in terms of the you know, production that it brings to the city, generates over $30 million dollars in economic activity and that's indirect spending it's actually the effect is actually over forty million dollars so uh, you can you can uh, you can find that's a it's a public study I so, had well I was listening to stuff uh, from uh, other individuals that are far less intelligent than I am and of course since I am all-knowing and this is a very powerful microphone when I open my mouth this microphone actually amplifies my intelligence I think you've already picked up on that already uh, Josh so uh, when I'm listening to this stuff I hear people talking about well Miss America's economic impact well it, you know it didn't really have a lot of retail value and people weren't really dropping a lot of quarters in the slots and the casinos are a little aggravated they gotta give up the rooms and I'm going wait a second whose side are you on and I'm like that's when I called you because I was having a conniption I had steam coming out of my ears and uh, my head was falling off and I go this guy needs to be um, I wasn't very happy about what I was listening to they were just going and going and going but I believe that Miss America and the air show and the Miss America and the Madonna show all these big events it brings tens of thousands of people to Atlantic City and you know what they do Wow Atlantic City 
really changed. What a spectacular place to see a show. It, it is. And I mean, when you think about the energy, you think about the morale that it, that it brings, it, it, it really goes a long way. You know, we bring over 5,000 of our state volunteers from all across the country uh, to send on Atlantic City to see it, in addition to the folks that, that come out from the local community. Um, but, you know, I, I think you really have to take a look at uh, a look at that. But, you know, after Sandy, a lot of people thought Atlantic City's done. They thought the Jersey Shore has been wiped away, and, and we saw it in my home state of Mississippi after Katrina. No one came. Tourism was down. People thought, oh, well, the coast is, is it's off. You know, it's there, there's nothing there, and nothing could be further from the truth. And I think that you know the big part that Miss America plays in this is that we have a two-hour telecast on ABC showing all the beautiful sights and scenes of Atlantic City and, and showing you there's something still very positive going on here. And, you know, Miss America, somebody asked me a question one time, said, what do you think, Miss America is going to save Atlantic City. Well, it's not in its own, but we're we're so glad, you know proud to play our part in that overall message. There there are so many positive things going on here, and if we can do our part to show that in two hours on a, to a national audience, we're uh, we're sure proud to do well, that. Well, we're running low on time in this segment. Dick Clark Productions. Wow. Um, how did that come about? I'm assuming Dick Clark Productions doesn't say, yeah, we'll produce you, and ABC, the network that is, uh, has been carrying it, they just don't willy-nilly pick up these programs. So you got some top-flight people, Dick Clark Productions and ABC. I'm assuming that they uh, they know how to pick a winner. Well, as you know, Sam Haskell is our executive chairman, and uh, before he uh, came on board with the Miss America organization, he spent 30 uh, years out in California running the William Morris Talent Agency, and he actually represented the Dick Clark himself back in the day. And uh, the opportunity presented itself to begin working with Dick Clark Productions. And for the listeners, just to just so they know, Dick Clark is the largest producer of uh, live television events in the country. They have more than anybody and it shows like so you think you can dance and the voice and uh dick clark's rocking new year's eve with ryan seacrest all of these great shows the amas american music music awards they produce them and guess what they just added miss america they know how to take a show that's good it has a solid core but they go you know what it needs a little oomph it needs a little pizzazz that's what they do right well look no further than this year's telecast you know i think with the movement on stage and uh the excitement it had a great rhythm to it and uh, we grew in our viewership we had nearly 8 million viewers seeing all the great things going on and here in the I, city. I, according to my calculator, and I saw some Nielsen ratings, I'm not quite sure what they're called, but we're looking at almost another million viewers this year over last year. That's exactly right. And then you were up like 30 or 40% with men. Hard to believe, over 30% increase and in men. Why do we think that? Some tells me that it was marketed in a more... Um, you know, very um, attractive way to get more men to tune into beautiful women who are performing and who are smart and sexy and uh, have well, the, some great solid character. Well, the network did a great job with pre-promotions this year, but what you may not know is that the uh, weekend before the young ladies competed, we took them all to New York. They appeared on Good Morning America with uh, our then reigning Miss America, Kira Kazansev, and all 52 contestants. We did Inside Edition. We did you know all kinds of, of uh, Good Morning shows. Uh, not only talking about the telecast, but again, talking about Atlantic City. And I think uh, you were up uh, in terms of TV viewers with teens, too. That's exactly right. Up Against Women, we were the number two show in the entire time slot. And let me just say this, Up Against Competition, we had the biggest football game of the season, NFL, going on. U.S. Open, rain delayed three hours right into our time slot, as well as the season premiere of the final season of Walking Dead, one of the biggest shows on television. So, in the face of all of that competition, it was, it was nothing short of a miracle that we had all this kind of growth. But I think it goes to show Miss America is still a household name and she's relevant. I mean, look at you know, the, the downfall of uh, The View after Kelly Johnson. Oh, I Our love Miss that. Colorado, you know, the nurse. They made fun of her stethoscope. Oh, and, I love you know, that. It, but, you know, w nurses, women across the country came out in full force of support her, uh, in, of, of her, rather. But I think it just goes to show, there again, Miss America is still relevant. Don't mess with Miss America and those ladies over at The View. They... Uh They'll think twice before they uh, try to slap down a, uh, a classic. And I have to tell you, I was a little bit disappointed in Joy Behar for doing it because she was a judge in 2011. She helped us elect Teresa Scanlon. And she went on her show after that and said, you know, this is what Miss America needs. I mean, you know, this, this is what America needs. America needs women like Miss America. And then to turn around that way. But I think you also, uh, you were able to pull in maybe one of the toughest demographics, one of the toughest audiences to get today. And that's, that's teens. 
how'd you, how'd you pull that one off? Because there's no way you can get them off their, off their Twitters and their and their iPods and iPads and their uh, iPhones. Well, our friends at Dick Clark certainly helped us with our social media this year as well. We had a huge. We were the number one Twitter trend in the world. We, if we were given two minutes, we would not be able to answer any of those questions that were thrown at them from the judges, right? Those questions were quite difficult, and they all handled them beautifully. Um, I did want to also mention that Miss Teen America was in the audience, and she also did a little uh, performance on stage, and then all of the Miss Teen contestants were there cheering on their favorite Miss America. We had a list of things we wanted to talk about. We love the girl. When it went to commercial break, she kept the audience just laughing and in stitches. Dina Blizzard, a former Miss New Jersey who was our MC through the uh, preliminary competition, she's hysterical. One funny mother uh, is her uh, her whole act, but she she does a great job, really believes in the program, and did a great job keeping the uh, the energy alive in, in Boardwalk Hall. And what about uh, Coach Mindy? You have some other thoughts that you want to share with Josh. Well, you know, some of the contestants I was fortunate enough to interview, and I wrote about them in an online that I post on health and fitness and Miss Alaska was a is a competitive biathlete she does cross-country skiing and then shoots and she's going to be world-class then our wonderful Miss Colorado who was the nurse and came in second runner-up I interviewed her as well because she's all about health so you have these beautiful women who are quite talented and quite smart answering those very difficult questions um, I remember watching Miss America on the boardwalk when I worked as a young adult at a nut and candy shop that's no longer there. And also when I was very, very young, sitting in front of my mother's house in, in her house on TV and watching the show and actually taking different keeping a test, keeping a scorecard on my uh, for myself about all of the Miss America contestants. Well, I think Coach Mindy brings up a really interesting point. You know, the thing I love about the Miss America organization and the competition is that there is not just one type molded person that becomes Miss America. You know, we take young women from literally all across the country, all different walks of life, all different backgrounds, and they come to Atlantic City and they compete for the same title. Some come from rural areas, some come from very wealthy families, some come from very poor families, and some of them really rely on the scholarship money to go to college and, and further their careers. But they have all one thing in common. They're driven, they're bright, they're intelligent, and they represent all the good things. We're looking at a brand new career for both Atlantic City and the Miss America organization. Would you agree, Josh Randall, COO of the Miss America org? Mel, we've got a storied past and an illustrious future, and we look forward to doing that hand-in-hand -hand with the people in Atlantic City. Thank you very much, Josh Randall from Miss America. I am Mel Taylor. Coach Mindy keeps me in line. Thank you, South Jersey. Every Friday, 3 to 6, we're going to turn things around, and we're going to kick everybody in the butt to make South Jersey, Atlantic City, Atlantic County, even better. WPG Talk Radio 1450. You have a great weekend.